If you're looking to buy variegated monstera, how do you know which is the right plant for you? Well, one of the ways to do this is to just see more variegated monstera. I reached out to private collectors on Instagram and Facebook, and I asked them to share with me videos of their plants. If you're new to this channel, I'm a doctor and tropical plant enthusiast in LA, but enough about me, this episode is about sharing other people's collections. So let's get to it. Oh, I forgot to mention that all these clips are of the variegated Monstera albo or the white one. If you're confused or don't know about the various types, I did make a video about that. I'm gonna link it up above. All right, let's go. If you're in the market in the US and many parts of the world, the plants that you'll see for sale are usually on the smaller side, usually about two, three, maybe four leaves. However, if you're in some countries of Europe, the plants you see there for sale are ginormous. Even though they're this large, cost about the same price as the small starter plants in the US and like I said, most of the world. I honestly have no idea why these huge plants are so cheap in some of these countries. But if you're in these countries, definitely enjoy how large your plants are. So this next clip that I'm going to share, I think answers a question I get very often. Oh, my variegated Monstera popped out a new leaf and it's almost all green or you know, is all green, should I cut it off? Is my plant reverting? My answer to that is always wait and see, right? So you see in this plant here, there are definitely leaves that are very well variegated, good patches of white, but there are also leaves, if you notice, that are almost completely green. Some plants do this. Some plants occasionally have leaves that are very, very green, I would advise people to not rush to the fear that their plant is reverting and just chop off these new, mostly green leaves. There's really nothing wrong with plants that are more green. I feel currently the plants that have more white in them are more valued. I think they're priced a little bit uh, higher and also their demand is more. But Honestly, it, it really just boils down to personal preference. I have really serious collector friends who prefer a lot more green on their plant. So this is a clip of me visiting Jake at his place. He's an amazing collector, an amazing guy, and has amazing plants. So you've owned, you've owned quite a few albos for a while, right? They were like my, Monsteros were my first rare plants that I got. So I got these like a year and a half ago. Thank God, because I got them like, they were, I, I mean, they were expensive at the time, but they're nowhere oh. near what they are now. Okay. Wow, look at the, the look at the attachment it. of, uh, yeah, your area roots right there. Yeah, it's grabbed on for sure. What do you think about about the importance of? the variegation of the stems. Well, I think the stem definitely dictates the variegation. So like if you look at, at this guy, so you can kind of see if you look at the stem, the stem has beautiful marbled variegation. Yeah. And so you have beautiful marbled leaves, right? Yeah. Like I love the variegation. But this one, plant. this one is less white than right. which, your other one. Which is which indicative, is indicative in, the stem. in the stems, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. For me personally, I prefer the variegation on this plant mm -hmm. to that plant. But that's just me. I think this is a healthier plant. It'll grow I agree. Faster. I agree. They, they grow faster. More green leaves means more chlorophyll, means more energy um, producing capacity for your plant, which also means faster growth. When your plant pops out a new leaf that has a lot of green and you're just cutting that off, you're really slowing down the rate of growth of your plant and you're really cutting off that opportunity for you know, to see how the next leaves are. If you like the content so far, please like, please subscribe, 
hit that bell button next to the subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. And also, if you want to share your variegated monstera, leave a comment below. Reach out to me on Facebook, on Instagram. I'd love to share your collection. So I categorize albo variegations in pretty much two groups. So some plants have a very patchy variegation pattern. There's a chunk of white and then chunks of, you know, mostly green. The other group of variegation, the variegated parts and the green parts are a lot more mixed in. So you don't have so much patchiness, but I would say it's more speckled. I don't know if you want it up on your counter or No, I think I think you, having it on the floor shows the size. Okay. That's good. <laughs> this is insane. <clears throat> this is li literally like the biggest specimen I've seen in a personal collection <laughs> like ever in California. This is crazy. This is like European size. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like this is European <clears throat> or like Florida size. The, the thing is that you rarely see this size just because, you know, like a lot of people would just like propagate this, mm -hmm. right? They would just like split this up. You would just like, people would hack this into like four, four plants. Oh yeah. Some are more speckled green, some parts are more speckled white, but overall, you know, the, you have less, you know, solid patchiness you'll have some plants that lean towards more patchy and then you have plants that lean more towards speckling. Which is better? It really just depends on you. People who are getting into variegated monstera, especially albos, should understand that leaf burn, leaf browning, leaf damage is, is the name of the game. It's more common than not. It's almost impossible unless you have very optimal conditions and very, very high humidity to have all completely perfect leaves. Sometimes you get leaf burn and leaf damage just because the plant is extra sensitive. You can provide the perfect amount of light, the perfect amount of humidity, and you'll still have leaf burn or leaf damage. And, you know, I think that some plants are just more sensitive than others. Just like how some people are more sensitive than others. Some of us cry at movies, some of us don't. I never cry at movies. I never cry, period. My tear glands actually absorb water. Okay, this one I think you guys are gonna find pretty interesting. This collector grows her plants in her closet without windows, using only grow lights. She told me that she had some trouble with root rot and some other plant issues, but the plants are recovering from that, so that's great. What does her planting these in her closet show us? It shows us that it's possible. <laughs> I don't know if I would recommend it. You know, with the right care, with the right research, we can really grow these plants in any environment that we have available to us. So I think that the more you see, the more you'll know. 
the more informed you'll be, the more comfort you'll have in buying and collecting your own plants. Till next time, plant friends. Happy planting.